All right. So uh, <laughs> why don't we, since we have a quorum, get started. It's the, um, uh, we call this meeting to order. It's the finance committee meeting. Um, we have August 11th at 530. And um, it's going to be somewhat of a quick meeting. We don't really, we just want to go over a few items. And um, since uh, Paul recommended, we can try with the meeting, uh, the agenda backwards. <laughs> <laughs> You need, a, you need a motion? <laughs> so um, well, that the three things that I kind of just touched base on that I thought we can talk about is, you know, our timelines. We can look at seeing what meetings we can set up for the future, what we need to look at for the, um, for the uh, special town meeting. We need to, you know, anything that's uh, um, going to be reflecting to the budget. Uh, we should talk about, you know, anything that we know of or, or um, um, items um, also, you know, which includes staffing. So um, I think one of the things that has come up um, recently, um, and um, I wish, I do wish Dylan, is he here? I don't, no, I don't see him. Um, because he had brought it up one time and said he wanted to talk about um, how it, uh, the stuff that fell out with the conservation and um, losing their person, their, um, uh, I forget, I forget, her. what's her name? I for, okay. I Janice? Janice, yes. yeah. Janice, Janice, and how it was going to affect us um, financially, you know, and replacing her. So um, anyways, I, I, I did meet with uh, Carolyn and Linda, and they have some great ideas. Um, so that's great. Um, I just figured this can, it's something that people have been asking about, so we can bring it up for discussion. That's, that's what we're here for today <laughs> for some discussion. So, um, if anybody wants to discuss, uh, the fallout, uh, from, uh, moving some people around in committees, you know, uh, how we had lost a committee chair, but then, and, and we lost a, an employee. Um, and how that affects us, if you want to pipe in at any time. Otherwise, I would say, like, Carolyn, give us her idea, some of her ideas. Sure. So um, I, I guess we all know that any major decision has a consequence, positive as well as negative. So I can tell you, you know, I'll start with, I'll start with the, the challenges. Um, I can say at this point right now, the the biggest consequence and the challenge has been the impact on uh, staff as far as um, you can't just let a department like that not have the support they need. So we've been trying to provide a lot of support to um, the board members of conservation and Gary in particular. And Janice, um, as you know, was probably one of the best agents in the state. Definitely, as far as I know, in Western Mass in Hampshire County, one of the best, um, most knowledgeable person. So that was a huge loss. And she has been very helpful. She um, left a lot of information for us to use as some guidelines. But you can't, we all know we've left jobs before. You can't leave all that all that's in your head that we're not, it's gonna take time to replace. So as far as a conservation agent, it's a really hard position to fill. If you were to look around at area communities, especially those that are our size, to try to fill that position is extremely difficult. And you're gonna see that across the board. It's one of the concerns for municipalities is replacing municipal positions are getting harder and harder, especially in the, in the finance area. But um, this in particular, conservation is very difficult. It's also difficult for a small town to draw, uh, to look appealing for a, just a part-time position. So these, these are the different approaches, but this is what I've been spending a lot of time on, um, looking at uh, what are the needs of the town hall in particular. We have another department who's struggling with some staffing issues that we reduced some staff there last year and that's had, a, that's had an impact. And as we look at that, uh, they've got two brand new positions, I'm sorry, two brand new employees filling in two crucial positions and there was no one really to train either of them. So that's one issue. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but they all kind of impact each other. It's so, and I know the desires of the town was to have a planning board, um, a plant, an assist, someone to help planning board 
Um, and so I did meet with Bill Dwyer and uh, along with our HR director uh, and Janice to say, look, what we know there's, we know there's administrative as far as the bench strength in town for administrative support is very weak. And that is the number one concern right now for conservation. There's no one there to take applications. There's no one to call and ask questions. Um, and then no one to set up the meetings. Janice, uh, I appreciate so much um, that she helped. She set up the, this, the meeting they had last night. She got that posted before she left. She got all the information ready for them and worked with Gary. So there's that, that part of that board that is, is a very, it's very evident and immediate of the consequences. It's a similar program that a problem that has been ongoing for boards like planning board and ZBA is not having that administrative person to help with phone calls, set up Zoom meetings and take minutes. So we were trying, we're trying to look at that. You know, you know, I said every major decision has positive and negatives. The positive is we're looking at this opportunity now. Is there a position we can create that can help support planning, um, ZBA and conservation, as well as uh, there, th it's just been very evident that there's administrative support that's lacking even within the departments to do minutes. Almost every department is behind in minutes, some for, some in, some for a long period of time. And, and that is one of the immediate needs is we've got to bring all, every committee and board up, up to where they should be with keeping their minutes. Because when we get a public request, which we have had several, which has been taking up a lot of Jennifer's time and my time to gather all the information for those that have requested it. Um, it they're, sometimes they're looking for minutes and that's really important that we have those for every board. So we're looking at that and we've got, I've had great input from uh, Bill Dwyer and from Janice before she left. Um, and Linda and I have spent a lot of time talking about um, you know, just she's she's brought a lot of history into um, how things have changed within the town hall as far as responsibilities and always the common theme is the support for the 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 director. You know, whether it's the treasurer, whether it's the town administrator, um, there's there's that support that's lacking. So going back to DPW. If you remember in the spring last year, we did some reorganization um, when Sharon left. And part of that was to bring up to, we took it a position that was part uh, full-time and put it down to part-time. And that's with somebody who'd been there for a few years. What we're ha what's happening now is we're seeing that impact pretty significantly. Um, it's having a negative impact. We have two brand new positions because Jessica left, who was that part, that position, um, that had gotten cut. And there, it is just a really difficult situation down there. We filled Jessica's position um, with a, a temp in there who's in there full time, but that part time position is being shared with Linda. Linda's assistant is, her name's um, Stacy, and she is covering those positions, doing a wonderful job. But the DPW, it's still, you have two brand new people there for a position that, for two positions that put, should have stayed two full time. We're seeing that now that was, that really in hindsight, um, that did not help that department at all. So we're trying to look at how do we help support the DPW, trying to bring up that part-time position up to full time. Um, we have not, none of this has gone to the select board, but we, I did have this conversation with Linda and Amy, so I wanted to make sure you guys all had. This is kind of where we're going with trying to find out what resources we have for money and how can we help fill in these gaps. So that's kind of what we're doing. I do have, uh, I'm setting up a conference call with Gary and a conservation agent who works um, in Wolverham and who does assist towns um, per diem who are kind of going through transitions like this or us other small towns that just can't find a full-time conservation agent. So I'm pulling her into a conversation to see if maybe she could do it temporarily to help just conservation right now, why we continue to look at the support for planning um, and 
conservation with more with the clerical issues. So right now we're just in the exploring phase, but I don't know the financial impact because I don't know that we'll be able to get somebody at Janice's level at what we were paying her. Janice started, I think in 2007, if I'm right, many years ago at $20 an hour and left last week at $20 an hour for 10 hours a week. I mean, I'm sorry, 10 hours a month, I think. So you're not, that's gonna be impossible to find. I can tell you that. So we are, it's, you know, every day we're spending time looking at different options and the needs change all the time. Even today, things that, you know, Linda and I were talking about a day ago, we've got more input that, mm -hmm. that changes the dynamics even more. So we don't wanna rush into anything because of, we don't know what it's gonna impact each department. Um, especially between DPW, the treasurer's office, and within town hall. So I know I bounced around. I don't know. So um, can you and I be? I think it's I think it's Val's phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't want her to go away. <laughs> Oh, you're all good now. Mute it, yeah. So I've thrown around a lot because it's an ever-changing scenario. Um, but I, I am confident that I, that I think as we move forward, and we, Linda and I, are spending a lot of time on what possible funding sources from departments that need this, the support, um, that we think we can pull something together that's going to be able to help a lot of departments. But we're still in the exploring phase with a priority for me, for the town right now my priority is to help fill that need at concert that immediate need to have somebody a, more than clerical probably not at Janice's level but close to it to help temporarily or permanently or temporarily to help maybe train a possible in-house person right now so that's kind of where we're at um, financially uh, we did not have to have legal attend last night's meeting for conservation, but there are gonna be times we're gonna to have to reach out to legal where we probably would have just gone to Janice or Janice would have talked to her, uh, a board member who's no longer there. Um, so I can't give you a number financially on the impact. Although I do think if we were to try to place, replace Janice exactly the way it was set up when she left, it would cost the town more money. I can't tell you how much that would cost. Uh, so how'd I do, Linda? Did I cover it well? Any input? Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that, was, that was good. I think that uh, what we were kind of touching a bit on when we were talking with Amy is the number of boards that are looking for part-time help, seeing if they, we can integrate that into this position in town hall, which will provide a full-time job for someone. And then they will be able to provide this assistance of doing the minutes for these meetings. And then, um, so the basic clerical is uh, definitely something we think we could cover that way, pulling together funding from the various departments that have some money for some part-time. So yes, zoning, planning. We even touched on uh, CPA, maybe using CPA funds for the, their <coughs> portion of support. So, I mean, we certainly would have to discuss it with each of these boards, but then where we start getting a little, wait a minute, wait a minute, is thinking of the, um, the step up, the little more professional level of help that Janice was also providing. And then we get stuck. We can't pull that together with little bits and pieces of departments that we will probably, um, if we don't have some other kind of solution, um, which might include internal training. Someone might be able to train and move into that, but um, that's just a that's just a thought that that came up this afternoon actually for the first time. Um, but we that is the one thing because I see you have budget on here too. That was the un one thing that we might actually have to go back and do some uh, make make a change in the budget in the someone's budget in the fall to cover uh, that level of, of assistance because we don't know at this point whether, how far conservation can go with just clerical support because there are so many implications of their, their decisions 
and so many rules and regulations and reporting to the state and incorporating the state's just regulations with the town's bylaws. Um, these are things that uh, anyone who's been on uh, conservation for a while, they've sort of, they've acquired this base of knowledge over time and we would we now need to make other plans. The Pioneer Valley Planning Commission can help out a little bit on that. Is that correct? Um, the the input that I got from Janice is she felt it would be a better choice to find somebody totally focused in Hadley versus um, working with another agency. Yeah, we again we use Pioneer we use PVPC for a ton of stuff. Um, and they all they have all their areas of expertise. Janice's, Janice's perception is we would probably do better trying to find somebody who's just focused on ha hiring somebody that will work focused on Hadley. So that we get someone, but otherwise it's a nice backup to have. Yes, it sounds like awesome. Yes. So I have a question. Um, if the board were to reconsider their decision, would Janice and Paula and, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I forget the, the third person and fourth person, would they come back? So if you were to ask them that the week after that happened, I asked, they would have, I would, I, I can't answer that now. Uh -huh. It just seemed to me that the you know, I understand as a small business owner, I understand the urge to when you see a problem to just want to fix it in the most efficient manner possible. But it seems that with this decision, the fix has caused so much greater problems than just the, the customer service problem that we had before. So I'm wondering if there's some way we can uh, just kind of reset and start from zero again and maybe uh, think of some other solutions to the customer service problems that don't interrupt our projects on Route 9 and put at risk our ability to piggyback the new um, plumbing with the, the work that's to be done uh, on, the, on, the, on, on Route 9. Are, are you asking me? Oh, or? I'm not really asking. I, well, I guess I'm. I guess I'm. I'm just opining that while I understand the need to, when you see a problem, to try to fix it, it seems like a good idea if you discover that that fix is a worse problem and a more expensive problem than the one you were trying to fix in the first place. Maybe it makes sense to revisit that that fix so that would be the select board's decision mm -hmm. and from uh from this point in time right now i don't think they're based on what i what i'm seeing in their conversations in at their meetings i don't see that they're going to change their mind i i could be wrong um, even though it's going to cost us so much more, and even though it's going to put, it's going to conceivably put our projects on hold and risk our ability to update the plumbing at the same time as the highway. Carolyn, you might want to address that Route Nine um, because that is something that uh, was at risk. But you think it is? Yeah, I was, much just, I was just going to answer yeah. that. Yeah. Oh. So uh, last night they met with MassDOT. Um, it seemed to go okay. Um, Gary's, they, the whole board has really stepped up and uh, Janice had gotten the peer review and gotten all of the information before she left and was able to sort through a lot of it and made a lot of comments and the board had those comments to work with. And I have not watched the meeting yet, but I did talk to Gary uh, and he said that things went okay yes, yesterday. So at this point in time, it appears that MassDOT is moving forward. Okay, well, that's a big relief. Yes, that's a huge relief, but it still doesn't solve the problem of the expensive uh, replacements. Nope. And I, you know, we're always trying so hard to 
make our budgets slim. You know, we're always trying to find another way where we can cut and, and you know, pare down and save the taxpayers money. But it seems like this decision is going to cost the taxpayers money. In, in this particular case, yeah, it probably, but um, down the road, we should think about things like this too. I know it's been hard because with the pandemic, we haven't, we've been so tight, but we want to think about some of these things because if one person leaves in this particular case, they just didn't reappoint, but what if someone passed away? What if something happened to someone, you know, we need to make, have plans in place or, you know, we, what happens is, and let's use the planning board, for example, if something happens to our planning board, we're in big trouble, right? So we're going to have to make some plans and we're going to have to think about, you know, um, you know, stepping up a little bit down the road to some of these committees that are so important like this and having some support in the back, because this is what happens to us. Um, it does end up costing us something when someone, you know, when a, when a volunteer leaves and anytime, these are just volunteers too, you know. Um, this particular time it was not reappointed, but what if someone just decides I'm not going to volunteer anymore, then we're in trouble. You know, we're going to have to find um, better solutions down the road. It's just something to look at. I agree, Amy, that there are a lot of people who, there are a lot of boards that are doing work of, um, that will not be replaced by the next set of volunteers. We're seeing that as there is a turnover of volunteers or various boards, it is the long-term members that continue to do the, the work and newer members see the boards a little bit differently. They, they don't see it as, oh, I got to step in, roll up my sleeves and start doing the work of it. They see it more as what you're doing, you cut together and you meet and you make policy decisions. And, and um, so I, I think that part of what, what we have been, that's why we have broadened the discussion in the last couple of weeks beyond the immediate issue with conservation and looking at this for support for other boards. Um, there are plenty of other boards where all of the information's in the back of, a, you know, was in the back of a truck or in a basement or um, in a corner of a dining room. I know I had a lot of things there at once. At one point uh, for one of the boards that I was on, uh, we wanna start providing better support initially and then when you provide support, you also have, you have the information. You don't have what's in someone's head, but you do have the procedures. You do have the fee schedule. You do have the set of bylaws. You have the information that one can, that, that is, makes it a little bit easier for the next, uh, next person in that position to step into. I, so, I think you also draw, uh, you, you will draw even newer volunteers on these boards if they feel they're not, they don't have to do all the clerical work. And that, it, it has amazed me about Hadley how much the boards do their own clerical work. And I think, you know, you, you look at your staff and you want to do a succession plan, which, which I think Hadley needs to do um, as people begin to retire. But I, I, I have to echo what you're saying, Amy and Linda, is that when these members who've been on these boards for so long if you had that one person who was at every meeting, taking the minutes, setting up the meetings, they start to hear it and they can, they could fill in if they had to for a short period of time of sharing knowledge, not making decisions for the board, but just having some knowledge base there. But it would also keep some members who are either get, you know, it's just getting too much, they're involved with other things, maybe to stay on a board longer if they knew they weren't having to do all of that extra clerical work. That's the burden that conservation's feeling right now. We have members that are very busy, still working, and to, to be doing the work that Janice did, just the clerical work that Janice did, is like, I, I'm glad we still have four left mm -hmm. and that they can still meet. Okay. okay. So how, how has it been with our budget? I'm, I'm starting to sound echoing, I think. Okay, so our budget with, you know, um, some of the restaurants coming back and, uh, and the rooms, are, are we seeing uh, the revenues coming back quite a bit? Yes, we, um, we should have final year end revenues soon. We are, most, we are mostly there and um, there's always a lot, it's, it always takes longer 
the end of the year because you're doing year-end adjustments. It's not just doing another monthly report. And so uh, that, that should be out within, within the, in August. And what we find is initially that we exceeded expectations. And then we have to remember those were lowered expectations. Yeah, right. So, so mm -hmm. um, but under, under all the circumstances, the town has done uh, very well and rising to the, uh, you know, stepping up to what they needed to do in this past year. And um, now with things easing up a bit, um, I think what we want to look at for, and, and it'd be great to have finance committee more involved in this, if we do find that we did such a great job, and I think we are going to find we probably have more free cash than we anticipated having, is this time to restore OPEB? Is this time to restore stabilization fund? What are we going to do with this? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to put it all into an operational budget because then you know, we, that's something we have to maintain. But are, there's, there's some things that we cut back on in, in the last budget that we want to restore and, and get our get our capital back in place and things like that. So I would um, I would love to have the finance committee to work to work with on on that when we have those year end reports. And it really ought to be within within the next couple of weeks, certainly by the end of August. There's just a few things to, to tweak and get right. But I don't like getting putting out wrong information. So and then I, I we should have free cash, really good free cash estimates by then. So if finance committee work wants to work um, to meet in September and go over this and, you know, where we go in planning um, the use of the money in budgeting, revised budgeting, other plans, that'd be great. About the ARPA money, how, what, what, what are you seeing from that? The ARPA money, we should, we should be getting another big chunk in next week, um, which would be the county's share. And that's a, a, be another for us, uh, should be another five or six hundred thousand dollars that we're getting next week. Um, we have uh, we went to and I, I see Susan is on, but we went to a uh, there was a presentation yesterday for the mass collectors and treasurers, and we got another big two hour overview of ARPA. And what we're really looking forward to is the nuts and bolts of this is how you apply. This is the best way to use it. This is what this is a good strategy for this kind of a town. We're not getting that kind of advice yet as for how to really jump in and do what's right for your town. We, on the other hand, we also have a few years to use this money. So we have some options here to maybe you know, just settle in and, and wait and see. We uh, I think we have to commit the money by uh, some point in 2026 and we have to have it spent by some point in 2027. So we have some time, we can gather the money, uh, we can uh, make some good plans. We should have plenty of money for making some capital plans. And that's also uh, work that we should get going on in the fall. A certain amount of it can be used for, as we talked about with the budget, we'll be using it for revenue replacement, probably less of it than we were initially anticipating. We might, um, so I think that we actually will have come out ahead and that's what we'll have to look at again too. So. Uh, there's a, there's a lot for you to jump in and get involved with once we start getting um, better information. So the revenue, I, I would I would hope that we could prioritize some of that for uh, buying that other um, ambulance that uh, the fire chief wants to uh, to add to, to to our fleet. I think there there'll be a, there'll be a list. I'm not sure. Does he still need to go on with one since he got the used? That, oh, that's the one I was talking about. The used one. He already got the used one. Susan's nodding. Oh, oh. <laughs> Speak up. But, yeah, I think he did. But we have to be careful because uh, one of the big things yesterday was okay. You can't put ARPA in stabilization for future future things, and um, there are certain things that they can use it for. Um, and uh, we need to look at the U.S. Mm -hmm. Treasury's guidelines um, that are on their website, which I haven't done yet because I was still at school today. Um, but uh, I, I thought, sorry, I thought Mike had already. Um, oh, okay. I, no, I we, have it, we don't have it yet. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. It's, it's coming, but we don't have it yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then it won't be in service because of various things that have to be fixed up. Yeah, except for it. 
but yeah, we should have several hundred thousand, uh, probably probably close to a million dollars for some of these other projects. And we have to determine which of the best things are for Hadley. So it can be. Um, and then we don't know what's coming with infrastructure. That'll be interesting too. We might have some options there. So I think it'd be great to have a, a group of larger capital items um, ready to go. And, and, and Carolyn's already started the capital plan with the department heads, which is an annual thing that David would do. And, and Carolyn's launching into it in a new way. Um, so not just to see what do we need at this town meeting, but what are what is the bigger picture, the, the larger overview, what are the what are the larger things that we need to tackle over the next few years, and maybe we can take one of these uh, federal programs and, and get it applied. Sounds good. So we'll we'll discuss more of that again because you'll probably have more updates in September. You know when we meet again, maybe. Definitely. Definitely have a lot more information in September. Not every, maybe not everything we need, but a lot more. <laughs> and can I just take a moment to brag on Sue and Kim? Yes. Sue, your Sue, your collection for this year. You want to you want to share? I'm so excited. Uh, as of last week, um, I had approximately twenty one thousand dollars left to collect for real estate for FY21, which has never happened before. Wow. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. <laughs> what is it that's causing that? Are you just doing, what, what's the reason for that? Well, I think part of it had to do with, um, you know, stimulus checks people got, but um, a lot of folks had come to me over the last, several years and said, oh, I need to budget better. And, and so we worked with people as far as mm -hmm. instead of doing like, uh, you know, a quarterly payment. Oh, what if we did monthly? And how about if you send in X amount of dollars, we'll apply it to your real estate or your water or wherever it helps you the most so that you don't pay more interest or that type of thing. So we're, we're kind of helping people budget. And it's, it's really it's really showing that it kind of works now. Yeah, so nice. yeah, you don't see that in most communities uh, that would put a payment plan because it would be more work for the staff. Yeah. So, you know, I, I really appreciated that. And Sue, Sue also goes over to the senior center on a regular basis. Um, so she's very accessible there as well. Again, you don't, I don't know a senior center who has their tax collector hanging out. And she's not hanging out. She's, she's there. She's, working. she's there. I'm eligible now. <laughs> she belongs. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Congratulations. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Yes, that's one of those areas where you'll see exceeded expectations. Um, I think we collected over just over 100% of the uh, planned collections in, uh, in taxes this year. So. Nice. Yeah, and then to do that. And, and I and I I guess the impact too with um to bring this back to DPW with having two new people there, Sue and Kim and other um, employees here have gone over to help the two the two uh, women over there help uh, get through some of the things that they just needed extra support and extra input. So I just wanted to thank because it's more than Sue and Kim. There have been other employees who've gone over right. to help them, um, and that that's just been great to see. Okay, that's wonderful news. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so uh, maybe we can talk about the timelines and maybe set up some meetings here on what you think would be good for us. Okay. So town meeting, I think it is uh, fourth. Oh, will you tell me what town meeting is again? October 21st. October 21st. Indoors. What time do you know? Uh, what time did you, I think you guys tell me, I, I, you guys haven't had a night meeting with me here. They've been during the day. Normally seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. On the 21st, it's a Thursday. 
We could make that 6.30 and make our lives yeah. a little easier. <laughs> Why don't we make it 5 o'clock or 5.30? We need a quorum. <laughs> okay. okay. So. Well, 6.30 works for me. So on, um, as far as when, the, when uh, finance meets, when would be good times? When do you think, because Carolyn and Linda, you're the one providing us with a lot of information and, and we need to go have plenty of time to go over the, board, <coughs> on the budget and things like that. So can you tell me when you feel like we should get started with some meetings, when you can have that information for us? Are you talking about a special town meeting or next year's budget? You're, you're still- no, a special town meeting. I'm talking about like, um, so, cause we wanna go over the warrant you know, for the fall town meeting. So we had, we had talked about that when we met. Um, it's, so what I have from my notes is it's, uh, you know, looking at past practices. Um, you, is it, usually you start your meetings in September or would you yeah. have met in August? Right. That, that's what, September. September is good is what we set what you set up Amy for CPA and for and we talked about for capital and I think that you're going to want to be the finance is going to be wanting to meet right in that thing, that same time frame and be done by the end of September um, as much as possible. Yeah, except I mean I definitely think we should be meeting in September, um, but. Um, you know, with unlike CPA is a little different because and capital, but really finance, we have more than just the, um, we want to talk about the ARPA, we want to talk about our, you know, we want to go over the numbers with the budget, and we also want to talk about the warrant. So those are our three items. Right. Okay. So um, the warrant, the, I'm just, I'm trying to backtrack with the warrant when um, you're, I, I would probably have that first draft. Um, we're going to close it on the first, but that's, that can change, um, okay. but I do have the select board reviewing the warrant on September 1st. Um, I'm just trying to backtrack, you know, things have been coming up even today. I've got a couple articles that are gonna end up um, being put on there. That's okay. I, I'm I mean, just trying to think when we'd have a rough draft for you that would be sensible for you. Well, if you're going to show it to the select board on the first, I mean, then we you can show it to us anytime after that. That's just the draft. And then we don't usually, you just go over the whole thing and you just explain it to us, you know, and then we we probably wouldn't vote till towards the end, but at least gets it on the plate. And so I'm going to throw out there Thursday meetings. Is there just because... Um, I know CPAs meeting on Mondays, Tuesdays are possibly capital planning, Wednesdays are somewhat of select board. We could either do odd Wednesdays or maybe Thursdays. What does the board think about Thursdays? Uh, I would prefer a Wednesday. It's okay for you, Paul? No, I prefer a Wednesday if we could. But... Wednesday, okay. Thursday works for me, but Wednesday is good too. Thursday. Alexi? It's a little unpredictable for me. I'm sorry. Uh, I okay. do work on Thursdays to cover other people in my uh, business. Uh, so Wednesday's a little better, but I may be free every Thursday. I just don't know. Okay. So can you tell us? Uh, Carolyn, when is the select board meeting? Which which one? Uh, it's in September. September. So the select board is reviewing the warrant on the first, and then you all are meeting on the fifteenth. Tri board. Yep. Finance, CPA, capital. Okay. So, uh, is, that a, is that a meeting, the 15th fifth, they're meeting? Or is yes. that a deadline? I, okay, I didn't, I didn't know they were all coming in together. Um, 
I would think finance would want to meet before that, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think so. So maybe how about finance meet on? Um, so the select eight? board is going to meet for their first review on the first. Maybe finance can meet on the eighth. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I can do that. I am having a medical procedure on that day. I don't know how I'm going to feel at the end of the day. Okay. Um, so if you want to plan it and I'll try and be there, otherwise, um, I, I'm a little hesitant to, uh, commit to that day. Okay. Um, are, are you, Actually, you know what, it's a zoom meeting. Yeah. You know what, why don't we say, go ahead and do that. And then, you know, um, I may need to have the, the video off or something for that day. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm flexible. So if that doesn't work out, you know, they, I'm, I'm open to any other time too. So, um, so I, I, would I, Thursday I, work on that week for you, Paul? Which week? I'm sorry. Uh, the, uh, September 9th. E no, because I've got, I may be working into the evening at an event. Okay. I could do the eighth, okay. but you're you're not available. So well, no, let's let's do the eighth, and I'll just I'll I'll really try try to be better by then. Uh, can can you just just yeah, I'm fine with you just turning off your video if that makes yeah. you more comfortable. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, so we're doing Wednesday the eighth. And I'm assuming everyone, you know, let me know, but are we all good with Zoom for now? Um, I yeah. will not be doing it unless it's on Zoom. I will not be going indoors anytime soon. I okay. have a medical issue that's really making me, you know, worry about this. You know, I'm still not comfortable. Okay. Uh, same meeting. I was thinking we were all good with Zoom, but I just wanted to double check. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dylan has texted me. He'd like to call in. So I'm just sending him a number because he didn't have the information. Oh, okay. But I got to type this in for him here because it's... Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, our finance um, will meet at 5.30 like we usually do. Yes. Yeah. Is this good for you, Carolyn and Linda? Yes. Yep. For me. Mm -hmm. And select board um, or uh, try board. What time should I put down for uh, us meeting then? Um, we've been doing six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Is that on? The, when is the is the try board? What day is that? The fifteenth. The fifteenth. Oh, okay. And okay. Now, okay, um, next, not to go back, but next Wednesday, August, and that I, uh, Carolyn, tell me if this is still happening. We're supposed to meet next Wednesday to go over the audit with the select board, correct? With the select board, yes. Oh, we, have you heard not, back from them, Linda? We have not, and I did. I had sent that out, so I suspect he's on vacation. So oh, we'll just keep. Okay. I'll just keep poking. We'll find out. So I will, what, what I will do if we don't hear back, I have to post it by Monday morning. So I have until Monday. And even if I can always post it as a, and, you, and if he can't come, then we you can. Can, can we have a backup? Too. Can we back uh, have a backup on that one as the first? If for some reason that doesn't work for him. If he's vacationing now, he's probably available next week. So, but I don't want to speak for him. Um, that's the 18th, right? No, the, the first, yeah, the eight. Uh, oh, it's no. Yeah, next no. week's the 18th, and then they meet again on September 1st. So, would that be the backup? How long will it take? Oh, they because isn't that our discussion for the split tax rate the night of just the discussion, or are we? I don't have that in front of me. 
September 1st? No, you know what? I think I did not erase that because I think that's going to be in November, right? That's the hearing, Car Carolyn. The class oh, is the hearing. hearing, but there was going to be a preliminary discussion. Uh, we were going to do it two months ahead? <laughs> Just a discussion, yeah. Just yep. for the discussion? Yep. Okay, then my notes are correct. I, I stand to correct myself. It's the first, September 1st is when we're having that discussion. So we could do it then. Yeah, the, the auditors, they're usually, I would say, they like to do a bit of a pro presentation. They don't go to, into all details. They're there to, um, they let the select board or finance ask questions. Um, and we like to handle, well, when it was in person, we like to handle them early so they could go home. But on Zoom, that may not make much of a difference. I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. Okay. Tops, I would think. 45 minutes, wow. No, half hour. I don't know. Joyce will I mean, kill me. Joyce will oh, kill me. <laughs> sense of time. This is all so fun. It just flies by. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they, they, they do their definitions as far as critical and da 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 da, da you know, and they go through yeah. that part, but we're, we've never really been there. So I don't know. Well, not with them. Uh, uh, Tanya used to come, but she's probably came right, two three right. times. And we have the, the accountant there the same night too, because a lot of the issues uh, relate to accounting and it's the prior accountant. So there'll be a lot of kind of, yes, it was a pro this was a problem, but it isn't anymore. And not, not that there's large problems, but they don't, that's the job is to point out all little things that could be improved. So, and then the accountant will ex explain how we're improving it. But I think it's good to, um, uh, this board has never met Powers and Sullivan, anyone from Powers and Sullivan. So I think yeah. that's that's the, the main reason to establish a connection there. So. And we're good. looking at 6.30? 6.30? That would be good. Yes. What's the date again? 30. As, of, as of now. 6.30, yeah, on the 18th. Yeah, and we'll let September. you know. I'm sorry, 18th of? August. August. We're, we're trying to get the auditor in okay. the 6.30 on the 18th and back up on the 1st. Um, I think he's on vacation right now. Um, 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 I would definitely keep an eye on the agendas because the, the select board has, it has not been consistently at the same time the past couple months. So yeah. The um, the split tax rate is on the first. Is that when Dan does his presentation? Yes, but it's not it's not the hearing. It's no, but usually finance list is usually instead of doing two, we've done where we just are going to listen to Dan's presentation. So you want me to post that as a um, post finance with select board? That's good. Yeah, I mean, unless someone else in finance doesn't want to, but we've always been listening to the split tax rate. It makes sense. It yeah. makes sense that you Be sure it definitely makes sense. Yeah. It protects you in case you have a majority there. And if you don't have you don't have a quorum there, it's you're fine still for posting it. Hey Amy, I'm gonna write it down. I just want to make sure I post it as a finance. So I may need you to remind me if you remember. Okay. I'll, I'll write a note, but that doesn't always ensure it. So it looks like we're on almost every Wednesday. We'll have, yeah, we'll have, that's true. We'll have the 25th of August, but other than that, we're on every Wednesday, sounds like. Yep. So you'll have the um, some reports. We won't wait for meetings to give you new information. When we have our uh, updated reports, revenue year-end reports, I'll send those out to you and to the select board and then if either of you wants to take them up at meetings, that would be fine. Okay, so I'm guessing we should just book it now then too, and, and just since we're doing meetings, we might as well plan on meeting on the 22nd as well, because I mean, usually the first meeting we meet on the 8th, just as just for finance, okay, as we look over some of these, then we're gonna um, probably need to meet again, you know, to put in our votes or our recommendations and everything else. So okay. I'd rather just have planned ahead. So if you're okay with it, let's plan for the 22nd as well. 
Okay, so we're doing the 8th and the 22nd for FinCom and the 15th is a tri board meeting. Yeah, in the first bell is is um, select board and FinCom if you want to listen to the tax rate, split tax rate presentation. Oh, the 1st of September is the split tax thing. Okay, all right, got it. Thank you, sorry. Okay. I understand that that's a discussion in concept. That's not officially part of the hearing process happens later, but it's introduced an explanation of what it means and why it might make sense this one year, just mm -hmm. to, to keep the, uh, just to int introduce the concept in a, in a way that people haven't really thought about it before. So okay. we thought it would be important to, for, for Dan to get in there and, and explain why they're even thinking about it. What, and which, nobody has before well no they have thought about it before they've never advocated it for it before so he wants to explain why this might be um a, a different a different year for taking up these kinds of things things are changed hi there this is dylan calling in can you hear me dylan we can hear you hi there uh heads up i have the body cell service so i might uh be in and out but just trying to uh hear what what's happening Sorry about that. I just had to shut my door. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i sorry, Dylan. I didn't catch. I, I knew that you said you have spotty service, but I didn't catch if you needed anything or. Uh, no, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure where we are at the meeting, um, but uh, I guess I, I'll just listen in and uh, I can speak up. Uh, when we get some time, there's there was a couple things I wanted to bring up the last meeting, but I was traveling. I was in Washington to climb right here, so missed that and then missing this one. Yeah. Um, well, just to I'll let you know where we what, where we are. Um, so right now we just finished um, setting up some meetings um, going forward. Um, so okay. and I send out some emails, but just FYI. It's um, next Wednesday, we'll have a meeting. It will be a tri, uh, tri board talking about the audit. Then we'll have a Wednesday off. And then all, most of September, we'll be, be meeting every Wednesday, um, either okay. with the select board or just the finance. So two of them will be with the select board and two of them will be with the finance only. Um, but I can okay. we can send out um, a list for everybody, you know. Great. Yeah. And, and the audit, um, just new to hearing that, is that a standard audit that's just back we're looking to the 2020 year, or is this something special or unique or different anyway? Oh, it's the FY20 audit that we just received a couple of weeks ago, and I think Carolyn sent them out to the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Um, every, uh, every not not every single year, but we generally have the auditor in from time to time to uh, to just to give a, a presentation and talk to select board and take questions. And this is our first year with Powers and Sullivan, so we wanted to um, make introductions and explain where we where where they are, and the accountant will be there as well, hopefully. So, okay. great, sounds good. Uh, we. Uh... We, we just, um, we didn't really get about details in the budget, um, just that things, you know, there are a lot of um, uh, good news coming with uh, uh, positives, you know, with, with some of our money coming in, our revenues coming in. So that was good. We did go over where we're, where we're gonna have to look at um, spending some money. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot more about this in September when we have um, better numbers, but, um, Mm -hmm. talked about uh, staffing um, and, um, you know, lose, how we have to replace uh, Janice. And we talked about how um, um, it, maybe it's a time to have someone where they, a person can take and help all the departments. Um, so we do need someone to help out in planning as well as conservation, as well as um, ZBA, as well as um, CPA. And um, even finance could use someone to help us um, with 
things time to time. So I think a lot of the committees, we need, there, there's a need for this. And so they're looking at that um, as okay. a- So just, just discussing some sort of a uh, structure, a new rule or a additional addition to a rule is what I'm hearing and yeah. how it'll impact payroll. Yeah, so well, I mean, I don't know how well uh, um, Linda mentioned that we could probably take some out of some of the depart, you know, some of the committees, but we'll have to look at, you know, the whole thing, uh, you know, but we'll, I think we'll discuss more of where the money will come from in our next meeting. Meetings. Okay. Probably from taxes. Yeah. Okay, just to be clear. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I'm too late to this. It probably would have been a little bit more relevant to in the July meeting that I wasn't able to attend. Um, but hopefully I'm not derailing too much of what you guys were talking about before I called. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, just some of the happenings in the town and loss of potential volunteers and how those volunteers might impact payroll, which sounds like we're going to get into in a little bit, but also potential legal expenses from uh, stuff with the North Hadley Hall, uh, just trying to get my head around that, trying to understand uh, if that's something, if we're past what we're budgeted for or we're in the same realm, uh, and if there's other issues, if we have to be worried about legal expenses creeping up with, like what happened with con Conservation Committee there um, back in late May, early June. So do you want me to kind of summarize what I do a really short, um, Dylan, we did, uh, we went backward, backwards on the agenda. And so we did address that first, but I can give you a real quick snippet with a couple of those things that you just said, because one of them we didn't address, which was some of the costs of North Hadley Village Hall. So um, are, are you guys okay with that? If I just do a quick review of the impact sure. of conservation. So it's a little premature for me right now to be able to tell you the, the, the legal costs that may be involved. Um, there was a concern that uh, legal was going to have to attend a lot of the conservation meetings, but um, they had him held a meeting last night and he did not need to be there. So it's that I can't really tell you on that. As far as the legal fees for North Hadley Village Hall, there was never, none of these projects ever have a budget for legal fees. Um, and so there, there was never a legal fee amount set aside or estimated for North Hadley Village Hall, especially there was no thought that it would have gone on this long. So um, as far as are we over, we are, we're, we're definitely over a reasonable expectation on what it would cost to deal with a situation like North Hadley Village Hall. I would say, yes, you're, you're, you are over significantly. And it's not going away at this point. We are still engaged with an attorney because um, it's, it's still in the courts and it's stuck there for probably, our, our town council doesn't think it's gonna be more than a couple months, but it's that that situation is still there. We were in contact with the buyer. The attorney's been in contact with um, the other, the buyer's attorney. So that, you know, that's about, I can't go into too much more detail about that, but yes, there, there are definitely, um, I think everybody understands and, and, and is frustrated, but that, 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 that amount is going to be much higher than, than a normal selling process. Um, so that can answer that North Hadley Village Hall. The, I would, what I explained to them is the conservation situation had any, any major impact has a positive and a negative. The negative has been really the impact on staff time. So it, it's not a board that can just sit on the wayside, it's got to have coverage, it's got to have access to the public. So the staff here, as well as myself and Jennifer, have spent a great deal of time um, trying to deal with, one of the things is the public records request. Although there aren't many, there's only I think three or four, the, the materials that are required to be provided is, has taken up a great deal of research and putting it together and working with the attorneys. So there's been a cost with, that, with, the, with the attorneys to review the requests, redact information, and let us know what we can send, send it back out. So that is taking time. And um, okay. I would say a significant amount of time. So 
you can't put a money, on, you can't put an amount of money on that, but, but there are projects that we're not getting to and workloads that have changed because of that. Um, I have, uh, we've, I've met with uh, Bill Dwyers here on the call. Um, I've met with Bill and Janice before she left. Um, as well as our HR director to find out what the needs are um, with other boards and committees because there is a significant need um, with, um, I would say the majority of the boards and the committees to have some clerical support, especially with minutes and supporting the volunteers so that they're not doing clerical work and losing volunteers or whatever. So we're looking at uh, needs, a way to fill that need at this point where especially with right now, the immediate need for conservation is clerical assistance. And um, that, is the, that is some of the assistance that some of these boards need. So we're working at where different um, budget line items that do support clerical, but it's not being provided. Could that help support um, a position that could help with all of the boards, including conservation? Um, conservation agent is very difficult to find, to fill, especially for a small town because it's part-time. Um, I do have a, uh, a conference call scheduled for tomorrow or Friday with an agent who works in Wilbraham, who does do some per diem for other small cities, small towns to help to see, and I'll have that meeting with Gary from conservation, just to see, um, you know, to have that conversation and see what it would look like, whether it's temporary, uh, whether it's permanent, whether it's to train, possibly somebody in-house who might be interested. So we're looking at all of those options right now. So that's my quick down and dirty description of what we talked about. No, I, I appreciate that. That's, that makes sense. Um, and the one follow-up question that kind of ties in a little bit was, um, I was hearing something about conservation committee and if there weren't enough people to support uh, the state level for anything involved with the Route 9 expansion. And I'm just wondering if uh, what if, what the credibility around that was, and if we're going to see some, because I think it does impact yeah. on the finance community because of these savings that we're going to have if we can put some uh, capital projects through while that's the roads opened up. Right. Yeah. So as far as Route Nine is that um, they had um, they continued a hearing that they were finishing up last night, and it apparently went okay. Janice. Uh, was amazing before she left. She really prepared the board, um, having reviewed all of the documents from MassDOT and they there were conditions that she recommended and the conservation um, continued to review that and, and have conversations. Most of the meeting last night was, ju was just MassDOT. There were some other permits that were being addressed, but that was the majority of the conversation last night. And um, I did talk with Gary. He seemed to think that it went okay last night. So I don't think there's going to be any uh, repercussions, as far as I know, with Mass DOT. They want this project to go. This has been a five-year project that they've been planning for and $25 million, much of it coming from federal and state funds. So they're going to do you know, everything they can to make that project work. So that's good news for our water and uh, sewer, for the water and sewer lines that we want to replace. So that was one of my biggest concerns, but it looks like that's going to be okay. Uh, they, they backed off on uh, some of their concerns about the quorums and that that's been resolved or in a, right. Is that right, Carolyn? There was a, there was a couple things. There was, well, I'm actually, there was probably more than a couple, but um, yeah, it was just, it was just conservation knowledge stuff. How's, that's the best way I can, it wasn't just farms, but it was where water, yeah. Watch, watch the meeting. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you, I appreciate that. You You're welcome. Okay. Is um, there anything else anybody wants to bring up? Motion to adjourn. Uh, and for me. Uh, I wanted to one just one thing uh, for Alexi. Um, your I just wanted to make sure at one point if you want to um, your your term is up this year, so um, you just have to go get sworn in again. If that if that's good with you with Jessica. <laughs> All good. He's thinking. <laughs> He's thinking. I'll work on him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
let's keep let's keep one board stable yeah. please <laughs> please i i just wanted to say you know um Sue and Linda and Carolyn, you know, I know these are tough times and I, I'm, all, I'm just impressed with how, you know, professionally and how um, cheerfully and with so much grace and aplomb you're continuing to handle all these issues that we're just being bombarded with. So thank you for your, your grace. You're welcome. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> that was for you too, Sue. Are you there? I hope you heard yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, there's a motion that needs a second, I believe. <laughs> Not to take over your job, Amy. Oh, no. I'll second it. Great. All right. Well, all, Amy. In favor, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. Aye. Have a good night. Hit the good red night, button. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.